Usually, the way crimes unfold is that someone tragically loses their life, but we initially don't know who the perpetrator is. It takes police weeks, days, months, even years to find the wrongdoer. But the case we're about to discuss today is everything and nothing like you've ever heard of. A crime took place on August 1st, 2019 in Mansfield, England. And what was so frightening about it was the fact that the perpetrator, within a minute of ending someone's life, confessed to it. What was even more alarming was that the victim's best friend saw the perpetrator flee. The terrible and mind-numbing case of 18-year-old Liam Gray might sound straightforward and cut and dry, but it's so much more chilling, haunting, and callous than you could ever believe. Welcome to True Crime Stories. If you're sick of the boring and overdramatic AI-narrated channels, then you've come to the right place. We do things a bit different here at True Crime Stories, more akin to a traditional true crime documentary of years gone by. So if you're interested in more old-fashioned style true crime, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and will keep you up to date with all of my future cases. Liam Peters, better known as Liam Gray, was born in 2001 to parents Joanne and Tony Peters. Liam had two sisters, an older one named Paige and a younger one named Madison, and a younger brother named Freddie. Liam's family was tight-knit, and his mom Joanne defined Liam as a happy-go-lucky child. Liam was the type of person that loved to goof around, and he had a personality that would always put a smile on everyone's face. One of Liam's traits was making everyone laugh. He would randomly belt out in song by the Backstreet Boys, and his family said that he had a heart of gold. Liam was also very easygoing and tried his best to include everyone, and his contagious and bright personality made him extremely likable. When Liam was in his teens, he met a girl named Sean through a mutual friend, and the two hit it off like a house on fire. Liam and Sean, even though they were very young, just clicked, and there was never a dull or awkward pause in their dates. They were super compatible with each other, and it's safe to say they were truly in love. Their three-year-long relationship took a very serious turn when Liam found out he was going to be a father. Even though a lot of people in the same age group would run for the hills at this news, Liam was ecstatic. Liam, with his gentle, kind, and caring personality, was born to be a father, and everyone in his family and friend circle knew Liam was going to handle everything just fine. In fact, when Sean broke the news to Liam, he got very emotional and elated. It was safe to say that Liam was looking forward to this new, exciting, and different chapter of his life. But Liam, as amazing as his personal life was going, was having a hard time in school, so he decided to move in with his grandfather, John, who was affectionately called Pops, in his home on Gladstone Street in Mansfield. This was the best decision Liam could have made for himself, and he was happier than ever. Sadly though, this very house would turn into a place plagued with hurt and agony for the Gray family. Liam's best friend was Reese, and the two were his closest siblings. Liam and Reese essentially grew up together and also went to the same school since they literally lived right across the street from each other. The friends were so close that even Reese called John Pops. As time went on, Liam and Reese's friendship only got stronger, and Reese defined Liam as his pillar of support. Reese also adored Pops a lot and even said that without Liam and Pops, he'd be lost in life. While living with Pops, Reese introduced Liam to one of his friends, and his name was Jonathan Treadgold. But Jonathan's life was a complete 180 from what Liam had experienced. Jonathan, originally from Kent Close Works Up, was in and out of foster homes for a very long time. His family was very toxic, and Jonathan's parents were not only violent, but also raging drug abusers. At the age of 14, Jonathan also had various run-ins with the law, and he was charged with criminal damage and threatening behavior. Jonathan also had a history of abusing alcohol and becoming very rageful and violent, leading him to assault someone on one occasion. If that wasn't scary enough, Jonathan was also convicted six weeks before the events of today's case for violently assaulting his girlfriend, which is just terrifying to think that a young, barely 18-year-old man could be capable of such violent tendencies. But anyway, Jonathan had a very different life as compared to Liam and Reese. Liam, being the caring and non-judgmental person that he was, befriended Jonathan, seemingly out of sheer sympathy. Liam wanted to look out for Jonathan and help him turn his life around because Jonathan was mostly a loner and Liam didn't want to leave him like this. 
But Liam's mom, Joanne, didn't share the similar thoughts as Leah. According to Joanne, Jonathan, even though he was very young, had a dangerous air about him. Call it motherly instinct, but Joanne didn't like Liam hanging out with Jonathan. Liam's sisters had also heard about Jonathan's bad deeds, but like Liam, they wanted to give him a chance. They hoped that good company would change him. But some things just never change, and Joanne's gut feeling was right. Jonathan was a lost cause, and even with the support that Liam had to offer, in August of 2019, everything came crashing down in the worst way that would forever ruin the Gray family. As soon as Liam found out that he was going to be a father, he underwent a miraculous change. He wanted to be the best father for his child, so Liam decided to take responsibility. He wanted to focus on building a better future for his growing family. According to Reese, Liam was over the moon after hearing this news, and he wanted to do everything in his power to provide for his child. Fast forward to July 18th of 2019, Liam and Sean welcomed a healthy baby girl, whom they named Isla Page. Liam, as soon as he was holding his baby in his arms, knew what happiness felt like. He was now a young father, and although there were going to be a lot of challenges, the couple was determined to face them together and come out on the other side. In light of his baby's birth, Liam made the decision to move from Mansfield to Birmingham with his girlfriend to start their lives on a clean slate. This news, as exciting as it was for Liam's family, also saddened them. Liam had lived close to his family all this time, and they were going to miss him now that he was moving about 65 miles away. Knowing that he would be moving away within days, Liam decided to spend the remainder of his time with his two closest friends, Reese and Jonathan. August 1st of 2019 was a hot summer day in Mansfield, and the trio had made plans to have loads of fun at Liam's grandfather's house before he left for Birmingham. The friends spent time in the garden, singing and having fun, and making videos on Snapchat. Liam, Reese, and Jonathan then went to a local store to buy alcohol. They planned to take it back to Pop's house and spend the evening there. Liam even suggested that 17-year-old Jonathan change out of his casual clothes into something nicer, and he lent him a pair of his jeans to make him look more presentable, as the trio had plans to kill time at a local pub. En route to the pub, Reese received a text on his phone, and it was from Jonathan's sister's boyfriend. Now, the contents of this message are unclear. But judging by the reaction of Liam and his group, it might have been something heated or maybe inappropriate. Liam, upon viewing the text, verbally slammed the boyfriend and stood up for Jonathan's sister. Now, you might think that Jonathan would take pride in this action, seeing as one of his best friends is standing by his and his sister's side. But Jonathan's reaction was the complete opposite of what you would expect. Jonathan violently lashed out at Liam, and the two got into a verbal altercation that soon escalated to the point where Liam, having had enough of Jonathan's bizarre behavior, suggested that Jonathan needed to leave if he was going to keep acting like that. Jonathan was irate and barely kept his rage in check before storming from the park back to Liam's home on Gladstone Street. After calming down, Liam felt bad about what he had said to Jonathan and suggested that he and Reese go back to the house and make amends. It was Liam's last day in Mansfield, and he didn't want to leave Jonathan, his best friend, in a bad mood, which really goes to show how Liam was as a person. Even though Jonathan's reaction was uncalled for and senseless to say the least, Liam wanted to patch things up and leave on a good note. After Liam and Reese made it to Pop's house, who was in the living room, Liam went inside to speak with Jonathan alone while Reese waited out in the garden. Reese was expecting the two young men to come out of the house at any moment, having made amends and brought things back to good terms. But nothing could have prepared Reese for what he witnessed just moments later. Not even a minute had passed since Liam disappeared inside the house, and Reese saw a clearly distressed Jonathan running out of the front door. Reese barely even registered the words that came out of Jonathan's mouth, which were, I killed him. Jonathan took off in a run, and Reese, after recovering from the initial shock of the whole interaction, rushed into the house and what he saw is forever burned into his mind. Reese made his way to the dining room and he saw Liam holding a tea towel to his chest, which was soaked in blood. Near Liam's body was a huge kitchen knife. Liam was pale and soon collapsed to the ground. With Liam was his grandfather, John, trying to stop the bleeding and keeping pressure on the wound while asking Reese to call the emergency services as soon as possible. Reese couldn't believe the horrific scene in front of him. 
on autopilot, he dialed emergency services and an ambulance as well as the police were quickly dispatched to the scene. Paramedics arrived almost immediately and tried to save Liam's life. He was still breathing, but he had a weak pulse and had lost a lot of blood. At one point, paramedics had to manually keep Liam's heart pumping. As paramedics were fighting tooth and nail to save Liam, some officers were dispatched to catch Jonathan, and the rest, along with Reese, went to Liam's mom, Joanne's home, to break the terrifying news of her son getting attacked. Joanne and Liam's sisters were shocked to the core upon hearing this news. Liam was just having fun with his friends before leaving for Birmingham with his family, and now the young father had been attacked out of nowhere and was fighting for his life. Meanwhile, the police who were after Jonathan got a call from someone. It was the owner of a local sandwich shop. And according to him, a young man had climbed over his shop wall and then confided in him about being involved in a violent situation and that he had attacked a person in self-defense. The boy even went on to show the shop owner scratch marks on his stomach by lifting his shirt. This boy was obviously Jonathan. Back to Gladstone Street, at around 3.15 p.m., Joanne made it to the house as Liam was being wheeled into an ambulance. Joanne was shaken, in tears, and just wanted to hold her son's hand. But she obviously couldn't, because paramedics were swarming around young Liam's body, trying to keep his heart beating and his breathing stable. Joanne tearfully addressed Liam by telling him that she loved him, hoping that her unconscious son heard her. It's so heartbreaking to see Joanne witnessing the brutal state that her son was in. The pain reverberating through Joanne and the rest of the Gray family, it's beyond imagination. Liam was rushed to Queens Medical Center in Nottingham, and he needed emergency open heart surgery. But tragically, after one and a half hours of the doctors and staff trying to save Liam, he lost his life. Liam was only 18 years old and was on the cusp of starting a new chapter of his life with the two people he loved the most, his girlfriend Sean and their daughter Isla, who was just brought into the world 13 days before the tragic and sudden attack on Liam. Joanne, upon hearing the news of her son's passing, felt her heart fracture, and she knew her life would never be the same again. Paige broke down and had a severe panic attack just outside the hospital, whereas Madison, who was at home, received a dreadful call and remembered collapsing to the floor in tears. One fatal wound, inflicted by none other than Liam's own friend, had driven the Gray family into an endless pit of sadness, disbelief, and utmost tragedy. Meanwhile, Jonathan was still on the run. The police were close by when they received another call, which disclosed Jonathan's current location. It was at a family friend's house where he'd confessed to attacking Liam. The police swarmed the area, and finally at 3.33 p.m., Jonathan was arrested by the police. Initially, the police had arrested Jonathan on the charge of causing grievous bodily harm, since no one knew quite yet that Liam had passed away from his surgery. But after Liam's passing, his charge was upgraded to murder. What was so appalling was that Jonathan stuck to the story of acting in self-defense. According to Jonathan, Liam was the one who attacked him first, and in fear for his life, Jonathan snatched the knife from Liam's hand and attacked him before running off. Interestingly, while being held in a jail cell, Jonathan was tested for his blood alcohol levels. Now, keep in mind that several hours had passed since he had anything to drink and had been arrested, but the results showed that his alcohol level was still three times the legal driving limit. This man was more than just drunk, he wasn't even on this planet anymore. But after Liam's tragic passing, the doctors performed an autopsy, and what they found was absolutely baffling. See, if Jonathan's version of events was true, Liam would have suffered from a great deal of defensive wounds, but there was only one deep stab wound to his chest, and no defensive wounds on his arms or the rest of his body. The fatal wound to Liam's chest also had a lot to say about how Liam was attacked. In most self-defense attacks, there's no intention to kill. The victim merely tries to fight off the attacker and lightly subdue them. So if what Jonathan was saying was true, the wound on Liam's chest should have been a slash rather than a jab, but the autopsy revealed the latter. Liam's wound was intentional and deep. And moreover, the police also went through a load of CCTV footage, and through it, they found heaps of evidence that were contradictory to Jonathan's self-defense rooms. See, according to Jonathan, Liam was an intimidating and violent person, and he'd apparently attacked Jonathan before. Jonathan went on to paint Liam as a violent young man by saying that he was a bully and that he picked on Jonathan for years, which doesn't even make sense. 
But when police viewed the CCTV footage of the trio buying alcohol at the supermarket, nothing was out of the ordinary. If you don't count the fact that Jonathan was shirtless in a public place, that is. Liam's gait and body language were not intimidating or scary by any means. It looked like three friends buzzing around the store buying alcohol. Anyway, Jonathan also claimed that after the argument with Leah, he ran to Pop's house to get away from the violent and angry Leah. But this claim was shut down pretty quickly when police viewed surveillance footage and found Jonathan not running, but slowly walking towards the house. His stride did not look like someone who was afraid of Leah. Also, Reese was there the entire time, and he corroborated that Liam hadn't done anything violent to provoke fear in Jonathan. The only time Jonathan was seen running was after he had attacked Liam, and it clearly looked like he was trying to make a run for it. Nottinghamshire Police Superintendent Kevin Broadhead looked into Jonathan's record of social services, and in it, he found some disturbing things. See, Jonathan had a tendency to harm himself, and the scars on his stomach, the ones he claimed were the result of Liam attacking him, were actually not current, and they were confirmed to have been self-inflicted quite some time ago. So Jonathan was basically trying to throw Liam under the bus by painting him as a bully and a violent man, when in reality, the real danger was actually Jonathan himself. Even though it was initially believed that Jonathan acted in a violent, drunken haze, he was coherent enough to come up with an unbelievable self-defense story to try to save his skin. Well, that obviously didn't work for too long. Jonathan was in custody, but what the police and really everyone wanted to know was, why? Why did Jonathan act so violently towards someone who regarded him as a close friend? It couldn't have just been some petty fight about text messages, right? Well, Superintendent Broadhead speculated that Jonathan was actually extremely jealous of Leah. Liam had his life together. He had a healthy and happy relationship, he had a loving family of his own, and he went on to build his own tribe as well, whereas Jonathan's life was what could be defined as a mess. He had no family, no goals, no plans to better his life, and he was just racking up criminal charges after criminal charges. This comparison caused Jonathan to basically resent his best friend. Although it wasn't like Liam was trying to be bashful about his life and achievements, he was genuinely trying to help Jonathan as much as he could. But sadly, Jonathan didn't see it that way, and internally, he was rotting away with the jealousy and bitterness for Leah. Now, keep in mind that this is all speculation, since Jonathan has not come out with any confession and still maintains that he acted in self-defense. Either way, Jonathan's trial was held on November 1st, and infuriatingly, he was tried as a child since he was technically under 18 when he committed the crime. This was quite upsetting for Joanne and the Gray family as well as the general public, because everyone wanted to see Jonathan get punished for what he did to Leah. To add to everyone's anger and devastation, Jonathan pleaded not guilty to the charges, and this led to another autopsy being performed on Liam's body at the defense's request. For Joanne, it was very painful to see her son's peace disturbed over and over again. She just wanted Jonathan to face the consequences and move on from this nightmare. Because of his age, Jonathan's identity was initially hidden, but the court did decide to bring out the defendant and killer in public, no matter what his age was, because what Jonathan made the Gray family go through by tragically ending Liam's life was inhumane in every sense. But finally, on February 7th of 2020, almost six months after the tragic passing of Liam, the jury reached a verdict. As the courtroom waited with bated breath, the jury read out that Jonathan was found guilty. And three days later, on February 10th, he was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 16 years. Jonathan, throughout the trial, was emotionless, and the only thing he ever said after the verdict was given was, sound. Even after the Gray family and the rest of the public broke out in cheers at the sentence, they couldn't help but feel that it wasn't nearly enough because of how violent and out of the blue the crime was. Following Liam's untimely passing on Sunday, August 18th of 2019, a fundraising event was held to raise money for Liam's funeral, his infant daughter, and a donation for a knife crime charity. A GoFundMe page was set up to raise 5,000 pounds to help the Gray family say goodbye to Liam. And at the funeral, Liam's casket was draped in the colors of the Liverpool Football Club, his favorite club, and it was carried in a horse-drawn carriage. What was so heartbreaking was that Liam's grandfather, John, who witnessed the attack on his beloved grandson, paid tribute to Liam, laced with the remorse and guilt 
for not being able to successfully save him. John went on to say, quote, I miss you terribly. I tried so much to help you. My best wasn't enough, and I'm so sorry. It's so devastating to see John breaking down, reliving his attempt to save Liam's life on that fateful day of August 1st. He did try his best to save Liam, but I don't think any words will ever be able to convince Pops that it isn't his fault. Liam's girlfriend, Sean, well, she was a mess. Sean has made a memory box for Isla containing pictures, mementos, and scrapbooks of Liam. And she vows that Liam won't be forgotten and Isla will remember him forever, even though his time with her was incredibly short. Jonathan, someone who Liam knew and wanted to so desperately help, robbed the once happy family of every joyous moment that Liam could ever share with them. We can only hope that Liam's family, including his daughter, can try to move on from this tragedy and pave their way towards healing. A petty argument, resentment, or whatever the case may be, Liam didn't deserve to have his life snuffed out so brutally, and especially not at the hands of someone he regarded as a friend. I can't help but feel a small amount of remorse for Jonathan as well, because his life was hard through and through, but that didn't mean he had to make similar bad decisions like his parents and his peers did. He had his own thoughts, his own desires, and his own ability to make good choices, but he chose not to. That in itself is devastating. Friends are supposed to be the people that hype you up in your successes. It's said that a bond built on trust and respect is the strongest, but whatever Jonathan had with Liam was the farthest thing from friendship, because people blessed with real and solid friendships never have to go through what young Liam did. Liam tried so hard to help make Jonathan's life better, but in return, Jonathan ended Liam's. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of True Crime Stories. I wanted to give a special thank you to a couple channel members, including Denise Hempel and Mail Kwan. If you also want to become a member of the channel, you'll gain access to new videos sometimes days or weeks before they're uploaded to the public, and it's currently the best way you can support the channel and help out. I really appreciate those of you who have decided to do that. If you want to join, you can click that big join button below the video or find the link down in the description. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, check out this other interesting case I covered, and don't forget to subscribe. It's totally free and keeps you up to date with all of my future videos. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.